Well, when an artist focuses on their artwork um, and makes it their, their lifeblood, um, artists will come up with their own unique voice, their own unique visual language, their own visual vocabulary. Um, Charlie's is, has struck this very um, wonderful, consistent body of work and it is very recognizable to be Charlie Haskins' work. Well, I think the thing about Charlie is that he has a distinct style and I've worked with performing artists mostly for over 40 years and, and lots of artists strive their whole life to develop a particular style and Charlie just has has one and it's, it's, it's very distinctive. Uh, whimsical could be a word that I would use, is a word that I would use to describe it, um, but also it's very much just Charlie. Even though there's the this, this style that there's different kind of undercurrents in their work. Sometimes it's like I'll paint pictures of animals or fantasy or even do like the portraits of around town. And I, th I think the thing that they all have in common is that they're trying to, to put like a whimsy or like a, a happiness. He was one of the first artists I, I met. Um, and how can you not? His, his work is about Portsmouth. I try to paint scenes that like everybody will know, almost like a collective consciousness kind of things. Like everybody knows what River Days is like. Everybody knows that, like um, these kind of quintessential like Portsmouth moments or things or, or, or people. Uh, he was fabulous to work with. It was great to go to his studio and to kind of get the history of what he was doing, the history of how, how he got to be this fabulous artist. He has this great um, illustrative quality of, of work. It's a contemporary, it's not really a cartoon type work. Um, it's, it's illustrative without being stiff, like, like regular illustrators uh, that put forth artwork. It's very tender. There's a lot of emotion. Um, he's very familiar with the subject matters and very passionate. And all of that comes out in his work. I've been calling it like, a, like an Easter egg technique. Like once I have kind of like that framework uh, with really anything I'll do, I'll kind of go back in. Like people in the know or people that know to look for these Easter eggs can find these hidden layers to the paintings and so like when it comes to the, the Portsmouth things I think there are like big events that everybody can see those landmarks and say I was here I was there um, this is who this is and but then a lot of times too like they'll have like personal narratives for me where I'll hide all kinds of stuff in, in there. To have arts in your community is what makes it home. It's what makes it personal. It's seeing other people's reflections on what you see every day. That visual exchange is is important and it makes us a community and it makes us a stronger community. The interesting and almost paradoxical thing about it is that it's, it's a street art, it's a public art, it's an art for sale at prices that that people can afford to pay. But at the same time, if you if you really look hard at his painting, he is a he's a colorist, like a, a fauvist, like a, like one of the great uh, uh, color painters of the early 20th century. The color, the use of colors, for sure. Um, as I said before, the whimsical nature of it. And just, not to overuse the word, but how distinctive it was. If I know too much about what I'm doing or try to get too smart or too clever, like with this is gonna be I mean, this, it's gonna be symbolic of this, it's got art history, it's got symbolism, like it always is a big flop. <laughs> and so like if there are smaller moments like when I'm painting and I just have like self evaluation and I realize it's kinda of like, hey, that could go like this and it could have a second layer to it and it just builds naturally like the content usually takes care of it itself. I don't think it's exceptional that Charlie has found a distinct style in, this early in his career. I think that um, exceptional artists find their style 
for the most part from what I can tell early in their career and what they do the rest of their career is that they basically hone that style, improve upon that style, uh, expand upon that style and I think that that's exactly what's uh, happened with Charlie and will continue to happen with Charlie. It's refreshing to see an artist who is working in his own voice with such a consistency, with, um, with such clarity that he's, he knows what he wants to put forth and he is able to, to execute that. I, I've got like a, a, a voice that is kind of like, a, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm glad that, that, that you like it and that it, that it makes sense, but like I'm just kind of making things up and figuring out as, as I go. It's creative and it's something that appeals to, I think, adults and children. Um, it has a lot of humor in it, but also I think he's just a great artist and I think he's a significant artist and I think that his style will evolve even more over time and he'll distinguish himself amongst artists. I, I'm, I'm, we're lucky to have him, and we're lucky that he's committed to staying here. Having, having Charlie in the community is certainly an asset. Artists very often are, are insular and back away from, from communities and, and find their, their uh, solace or their work in, in a very solitary condition. Uh, Charlie's not like that. Charlie brings art to the community, and he does art in the community. Maybe a little bit of advice is that if you kind of just keep your energy up, I always tell people keep the sun in your belly and just it will take you where you need to be. And I think that, that Charlie's greatest contribution to the community is that he stays here and he does his work in place where, where he learned and where he, he loves the people and so on.